Hey, today we're going to finish our story, Hachiko Waits. When we last left our story, Hachi was coming back to the station to meet the professor. Let's find out what happens. Chapter 8. And so it went, day after day after day. Hachi waited at the train station in the spring when the cherry blossoms bloomed, and in the summer when the rains came. He waited in the autumn when the leaves changed color, and in the winter when the snow fell. Day after day after day, Hachi arrived at the train station just before three o'clock to meet the professor. Day after day after day, he was disappointed, but he never gave up hope. Mr. Yoshikawa did not know where Hachi went when he locked up the station at midnight. He did not know where Hachi slept. He did not know where Hachi spent the morning and the early part of the afternoon. But he did know where Hachi would be every day just before three o'clock sitting on the platform waiting for his master. But instead of the professor, now it was Yasuo who stepped off the train. Yasuo had turned 10 on his last birthday, and now he was old enough to travel back and forth to school by himself. Hello, Hachi! Yasuo called to the dog sitting on the platform. Hachi looked at Yasuo for a brief second, thumped his tail against the ground twice, and then turned his attention back to the crowd of people getting off the train. I will be there in a minute with your food! Yasuo said, going into the station master's office to fill Hachi's bowl. He placed it in front of the dog and stroked the fur between his ears while he ate. A small woman with thin gray hair pulled back in a bun came to stand next to Yasuo. Is it the dog I have heard about who waits for his master? She asked. Yeah, this is Hachi, Yasuo answered. The woman stu studied him for a few minutes. May I pat him? She asked. Oh yes, he will not hurt you. He is very gentle. Yasuo said the same words to the woman. The professor had said to him on the day they met years before. I'm sorry for your sadness, Hachi, the woman said as she stroked his neck. Hachi turned to her for a moment, and his ears slid back at the softness of his, her voice. She gently rubbed the white patch of fur between Hachi's eyes as he looked at her. And then a train approached the platform and Hachi returned his gaze to the railroad tracks. As the train discharged its passengers, Hachi sat up straight and turned his head to the right, to the left, to the right again, looking at all the people who passed him. A man who wore a pair of black framed glasses and a business suit, and was about Professor Ueno's height, walked toward Hachi. The dog sat up even taller and began to tremble all over, his nose sniffing the air. But the man hurried past, and Hachi, realizing that the man was a stranger, stilled himself and continued his search for the professor. That man looked like Hachi's master, Yasuo explained to the old woman who was watching the dog intently. The woman reached out to stroke Hachi's fur again. Hachi, you are a very good dog, she said to him, and your master was a very good man. Yasuo picked up Hachi's bowl and looked at the woman. Did you know Professor Ueno? he asked. No, the woman answered, but it is clear to me that he was a fine man. That's why Hachi continues to hope and to wait. He remembers the kindness of his master. One day, a man in a dark gray suit and a hat, whom Yasuo had never seen before, came to the train station. He stood next to Hachi, watching him as several trains arrived, discharged their passengers, and departed. The man studied the way Hachi sat, looked up, looking up at each face that passed him and how his own face was filled with longing. He took photographs of Hachi with an expensive-looking camera. Then the man asked Yasuo many questions about the dog and wrote everything down in a little notebook. The next day, when Yasuo arrived at the train station, Mr. Yoshikawa handed him a newspaper. Look, here's a picture of our Hachi, he said, pointing to a page. Hachiko waits, Yasuo read the headline out loud, and then he read the caption underneath Hachi's photo. Chukan Hachiko sits at Shibuya station waiting for his master. I think he has earned the official name of Hachiko, says the station master. After all, he is our beloved Hachi, and he deserves a name of respect. I will tell him, Yasuo said as he crossed the platform. Look, here's your photo, Hachiko. Yasuo emphasized the term of honor and affection the newspaper had added to the end of Hachi's name. Hachi wagged his tail at the sound of Yasuo's voice and turned to smell the newspaper he held, but found it of little interest. As always, his main concern was the people on the platform who had just come off the train. And here is your new name. Yasuo held the paper out again. Chuken Hachiko. The faithful dog, Hachiko. You are a celebrity now, Hachi. I mean, Hachiko. From that day on, people from all over Japan came to see Chukun Hachiko, the famous dog who sat in Shibuya Station waiting for his master. Many people who had fallen on hard times drew strength from meeting him. If Hachiko does not give up hope, we will not give up hope. 
they said to one another. Many people stroked Hachiko's fur, believing that touching him would bring them good fortune, and those who could give the station master money so that Akitakan would not go hungry. Everyone who met Hachiko was moved by his loyalty and his devotion. Years passed, and the station master and Yasuo were as devoted to Hachiko as he was to his master. Now that they had extra money to care for him, they were able to buy Hachiko treats from the food vendors outside the train station. Yasuo wandered up and down in front of the food stalls, deciding what to buy. Would Hachiko like a bowl of udon? Nah, the noodles might be too slippery for him. What about a serving of oden? Tofu, eggs, fish, vegetables cooked in a broth tasted good to Yasuo, but he did not think a dog would like it. He stopped in front of the yakitori stand and ordered a skewer of grilled chicken. Hachiko leapt up and wagged his tail when he saw what Yasuo had brought him. Wait a minute, Hachiko, Yasuo laughed, holding the food up and out of the dog's reach. Let me take the chicken off the skewer and put it into your bowl. But Hachiko did not want to wait. He jumped up and knocked the skewer out of Yasuo's hand. Then he reached out on the platform and held the stick between his two front paws and pulled off pieces of chicken by himself. How clever you are, Yasuo said. I've never seen a dog do that. Yasuo went downstairs to buy another serving of yakitori and asked the vendor to follow him back to the train station. He called the station master over to watch Hachiko eat. Look how smart he is, Yasuo pointed at Hachiko, pulling the chicken right off the skewer. Yes, he is very bright, Mr. Yoshikawa agreed, and he had an excellent teacher. The station master reminded Yasuo, he may have a skewer of yakitori whenever he wants one, the food vendor said. You do not even have to pay me for it. It's my pleasure. He watched Hachiko eat for another minute and then bowed goodbye and returned to his stand. Another day, when Yasuo was a teenager, he and some classmates got off the train at Shibuya Station. Yasuo, come play baseball with us, one of the boys said. I cannot, Yasuo said. I have a responsibility. He gestured toward Hachiko, sitting on the platform. The station master was standing nearby. Go with them, Mr. Yoshikawa said. I'll take care of Hachiko today. Come with us, Yasuo, his friend called again. We're going to the park. Yasuo looked at his schoolmates, and then he looked at Hachiko. The dog's brown eyes were so full of hope and so full of sadness. How could he desert him? I'll meet you there later, he told his friends, after I feed Hachiko. Yasuo and the station master walked over to the golden brown Akita. Mr. Yoshikawa reached down to pat the dog's head. You are very good to him, he said to Yasuo. Someday he will reward you. Yasuo laughed. How could Hachiko reward him? You will see, said Mr. Yoshikawa. I do not know how and I do not know when, but I do know that it will happen. I have a strong feeling about it in here. He pointed to his stomach. Hachiko is a very loyal dog. You have treated him well, and I would be surprised if such a good deed went unrewarded. Time passed, and Yusuo continued to help the station master take care of Hachiko. They gave him fresh food and water every day. They cleaned and brushed his fur, and most important, they made sure that everyone who touched him treated him with kindness. Mr. Yoshikawa and Yasuo used some of the money people had given them to build a shelter for Hachiko behind the train station. Sometimes he slept in it, and sometimes he did not. Sometimes he arrived at the train station, wet from the rain or with bits of snow clinging to his fur. One day he sat perfectly still as a small earthquake rattled the Shibuya station. Day after day, month after month, year after year, Hachiko sat on the platform waiting. It seemed that nothing would ever stop him from meeting that three o'clock train. I'm going to pause here for a second and ask a question. You guys might want to turn off the video and talk about it and then come back. What is life like for Hachiko now? And how is life for Yasuo? Talk about these two things and then come back and hear the rest of the story. Chapter 9. One spring day, a few weeks after the cherry blossoms had bloomed, Yasuo arrived at the train station a little before 3 o'clock. He was 16 years old now and wore a handsome navy blue uniform and a cap, bearing his school's emblem over the brim. As soon as he stepped off the train, he went to go see the station master. Come to my office, Yasuo, and I will get you some food for Hachiko. The station master moved slowly now, and his hair was as white as the rice he scooped into Hachiko's bowl. Today is a very special day. Do you know why? Yasuo thought for a minute. It was the fifth day of the month. It's Tengo no Seku. He said to the station master, Yep, it's boys' day, Mr. Yoshikawi said. But 
there's another reason why today is special. Yasuo thought again. It's, is it your birthday? He asked. No. Is it Hachiko's birthday? No, but it does have something to do with Hachiko. Today marks exactly 10 years that Hachiko has waited for the professor. 10 years! Yasuo shook his head. There's never been a dog as loyal as Hachiko, he said to the station master. Yasuo took Hachiko's bowl of food and walked over to the platform. Hachiko was lying on his side with his head resting on the ground. He was an old dog now, and the golden brown fur around his muzzle had turned white. His left ear had begun to droop several years ago and was now almost bent in half. Hachiko had grown thin and was no longer able to sit up tall and straight. Sometimes he was too tired to climb the steps to the train station, and the yakitori vendor and the station master had to help him do it. Often, he would be lying on the platform when Yasuo arrived, and sometimes he was even asleep. Hello, Hachiko, Yasuo said in a gentle voice as he squatted down to pet the dog's side. He could feel Hachiko's ribs beneath his fur. Wake up, little friend, Yasuo said. Do you know it has been 10 years that you have waited for the professor? The Akita opened his eyes and stared at Yasuo, but he did not lift his head. Hello, little friend. What a good dog you are. Yosua said softly. What a fine dog you are, Hachiko. You are the best dog in all of Japan. As he stroked the side of Hachiko's face with his fingertips, the dog's right ear tilted forward at the sound of an approaching train. Do you want to get up, Hachiko? Yosua asked. Hachiko looked at Yosua, and then with a great effort, he struggled to his feet. The train appeared around the bend of the tracks, pulled up to the platform, and ground to a loud stop. Hachiko looked up at it sat up as tall and straight as he could and opened his mouth. Wah, wah! Hachiko barked loudly. Wah, wah! Then, all his strength gone, he sighed a great sigh and collapsed to the ground. Hachiko! Yasuo cried as he watched the dog take a few shuddering breaths. His chest heaved up and down once, twice, three times, and then was still. Yasuo ran to get the station master. Hurry! We must help him! He cried. Mr. Yoshikawa came running. He knelt down by the dog and stroked Hachiko's great head. It's too late, he said, his voice filled with great sorrow. A small crowd gathered near Hachiko's body. The Yakatori vendor took off his happy jacket and handed it to Yasuo with a silent bow. Yasuo took the jacket and tenderly covered the dog with it, and then he turned his head and blinked his eyes rapidly. He was almost a grown man now, and he did not want to cry. Oh, but Miss Barrett's crying. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Come with me, Mr. Yoshikawa said. He brought Yosuo into his office and had him sit down in a chair. The station master pulled up another chair for himself, and the two friends sat together side by side without speaking, each deep in thought. After a while, the station master looked at Yosuo. We feel sad for ourselves because we will not see Hachiko anymore, he said. But there's a reason to feel happy, too. What is there to feel happy about? Yasuo asked, his eyes brimming with tears. Hachiko's no. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is silly. Hachiko is no longer old and he is no longer tired, answered Mr. Yoshikawa. Who is a bit tired? Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I've got myself back together. <laughs> <sighs> Hachiko was no longer old, and he is no longer tired, answered Mr. Yoshikawa, who was a bit old and tired himself. He has left his body, but his spirit is in a better place now. Do you really think so? asked Yasuo. I will tell you what I think, the station master said, though it is far from traditional, and it may even sound foolish. Mr. Yoshikawa paused and waited while a train pulled into the station. Do you hear that train? he asked. Yasuo nodded. I've been around trains all my life, Mr. Yoshikawa said, and I have come to believe that there is a special train to bring those who have obtained enlightenment up to heaven. Every day for the past 10 years, Professor Ueno has met this special train to see if his beloved Akita Ken is on it. Day after day after day, he has waited up in heaven just as Hachiko has waited here on earth. And today, when the special train reaches heaven and opens its doors, Hachiko will be the first one to step out. Just think how happy he will be to see his master again. Yasuo smiled. He will lick the professor's fingers and then run in circles and make himself dizzy. Mr. Yoshikawa smiled too and brushed away a tear. I will miss him very much. Yasuo nodded and wiped his wet cheeks. So will I. Chapter 10 
The day after Hachiko died, Yasuo came to the train station as he always did. He was so used to visiting Hachiko and the station master, he did not know what else to do. So he sat down on a wooden bench near the train tracks and looked at the passengers as they exited their trains. As he watched, two women dressed in flowered kimonos stepped onto the platform. They turned eagerly toward Hachiko's waiting place. When they saw that he was not there, they looked at each other in confusion. Yasuo rose from his bench and walked over to them. Hachiko's heart stopped beating yesterday, he said, bowing his head with grief. I'm so sorry, both women said at once. The Akitakan has died? A student holding a stack of books in his arms stopped in his tracks, stunned. Chukun Hachiko is no longer with us, a young mother told her son. Word of Hachiko's death spread quickly through the Shibuya station. As each train pulled up to the platform, the people who stepped off looked to Hachiko's spot as if they could not believe what they were being told. The expressions on their faces turned from hope to pain to sorrow as they saw that the news was true. It was almost more than Yasuo could bear. Yasuo returned to the wooden bench and sat down wearily. He looked at Hachiko's spot and then he shut his eyes. If only when he opened them, he would see his little friend sitting up tall and straight among the crowd, his gaze fixed on the railroad tracks as he waited for his master. Yasuo squeezed his eyes shut tight, even more tightly, and then opened them again, open, hoping for a miracle. But Hachiko's spot was just as empty as it had been moments before. Even though many people were getting off their trains, no one walked over the place where Hachiko had once waited. Yasuo slumped down on the bench, stared straight ahead, and watched person after person walk around Hachiko's spot just as they had when he was alive. And then he got an idea. He went to Mr. Yoshikawa's office and asked his friend to come sit with him on the wooden bench. I have just thought of a way to bring Hachiko back, Yasuo said. Mr. Yoshikawa looked at him, his eyebrows knitted together in puzzlement. How? he asked. Do you see the people getting off their trains? asked Yasuo. The station master nodded. Do you see how everyone looks at the spot where Hachiko used to sit? The station master nodded again. What if we built a statue of Hachiko and placed it on his spot? Yasuo asked. Then he will always be with us. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, said Mr. Yoshikawa, but where will we find the money to pay for it? Excuse me, I do not mean to intrude, said a man wearing thick black frame glasses, but I could not help overhearing a conversation. I do not have much money, but I miss seeing Hachiko sitting there. I will give you what I can to help build the statue. And with that, the man pressed a small silver coin with a hole in the middle worth five sen into the station master's white gloved hand. I will give something to a woman, said opening her pocketbook. More and more people donated money, and again, a story about Hachiko was printed in the newspaper. People from all over Japan were so moved by the tale of the loyal, faithful dog that they sent as much money as they could. After more newspaper stories were written, more people heard about Hachiko. People from far away, people from as near as the next street over and as far away as the United States all sent money to help pay for the statue to be placed at Shibuya Station. By the time the summer rains had ended, enough money had been collected to pay for the statue. After much discussion, a well-respected sculptor was selected for the job. He came to the tray station to speak with Yusuo. Tell me about Hachiko, said the artist. I understand you knew him best. This is where he waited, Yusuo said, showing the man the place where Hachiko used to sit. And when he sat up, the top of his head came to about here. He put the flat of his hand up to his hip. His eyes were deep set and small, and his ears were shaped like triangles. Yes, I have seen the pictures in the newspapers, said the artist. Can you tell me something about him I could not see in a photograph? Isuo thought for a minute. Hachiko was completely devoted to Professor Ueno, he said. Many people wanted to adopt him, but he would not give his heart to anyone but his master. Oh, that's very helpful, said the sculptor, nodding. He was kind to all and treated everyone in the same manner, Yasuo went on. It didn't matter if you were a child or an adult. It didn't matter if you were a man or a woman. It didn't matter if you were rich or poor. If you wanted to touch Hachiko's fur for luck, he would allow it. He was gentle with everyone. He got upset only when someone tried to move him from his waiting spot. I see, said the artist. Is there anything else? Yasuo shut his eyes and a picture of Hachiko arose in his mind. And he was always very dignified, he said, swallowing hard, even at the end. When he could not sit up tall and straight, he always did his best. Arigato, Yasuo, and the man said. I now have what I need, and with a bow of thanks, he left the station. <clears throat> the sculptor went to his studio at once. Day after day, he locked himself inside his workspace, but he would not permit, permit anyone to enter. I will let you know when the sculpture is finished, he said, whenever anyone came by his door. Month after month went by, still. 
There was no word from the sculptor. Almost a whole year had passed since the day Hachiko had died, and it was spring again. Then, right after the cherry blossoms bloomed and fell from the trees, the artists announced the statue was ready. It was covered with a white cloth and brought to the Shibuya station, where a great ceremony was held. Trains scheduled to enter the station were halted between 3 and 4 o'clock. People started arriving at 2.30, and by the time Yasuo and his parents reached the station, an enormous crowd had gathered. People spilled over from the platform, into the train station, down the steps, and onto the street. Yasuo struggled to move through the solid wall of people, like a carp swimming upstream. He looked back over his shoulder several times to make sure his mother and father were following him. At last, they reached the platform and made their way over to the station master, who was standing next to Hachiko's waiting spot. There are so many people here, Yasuo said in amazement. Yes, said Mr. Yoshikawa. There are teachers and students from Tokyo Imperial University who knew Professor Ueno. There are commuters who knew Chuk and Hachiko. He pointed to a group of men holding their notebooks and cameras. And there are also reporters. At precisely three o'clock, a Shinto priest began the ceremony by saying a prayer that expressed gratitude for the ancestors. Then he asked that those gathered before him would be blessed with health, happiness, prosperity, and protection. Next, a man who taught at the university alongside Professor Ueno said a few words. Professor Ueno loved the earth and he loved the plants and the trees and the flowers that grow upon it, said the professor's colleague. He loved to teach and he loved his students, but most of all he loved his golden brown Akitakan. The artist who had created the sculpture was next to address the crowd. Many of you have been curious about what I have been doing for the past year, he said. You wondered why no noise came from my studio and why no supplies were carried in or out. This is because I had to prepare myself for the great task I was given. He gestured toward the statue, still hidden from view under its cloth. I needed to sit still for many, many hours, just as Hachiko sat, in order to understand him and to appreciate him, the artist said. Only after I had experienced enough stillness and solitude did I feel ready to begin, and then I knew at once exactly what to do. Finally, Mr. Yoshikawa spoke. First, he thanked everyone who had donated money to build Hachiko's statue. Without each and every one of you, this would not be possible, he said, spreading his arms wide. And then he motioned for Yasuo to join him. I would like to present Yasuo Takahashi, the station master said to the people standing on the platform. He was a great friend to Hachiko, and I'm sure he has something to say. Yasuo stood still and looked at the station master. Mr. Yoshikawa nodded and motioned again. They're waiting, Yasuo, Mr. Takahashi whispered to his son. Just say what's in your heart, Mrs. Takahashi added. Yasuo took a deep breath and stepped in front of the statue and bowed his respects to the crowd. Hachiko taught us many things, he began, but then he had to stop. His voice was thick with tears and his words sounded broken and shaky. Yasuo blinked his eyes and swallowed hard. The train station, usually such a noisy place, was completely quiet as Yasuo struggled to calm himself. He looked into the crowd and noticed a little boy in a navy blue sailor suit holding his mother's hand. The boy looked to be about five years old, the same age Yasuo was on the day he first met the professor in Hachiko. When the little boy saw Yasuo looking at him, his face broke into a smile, and Yasuo smiled back and felt brave enough to go on. Hachiko taught us all that we must never give up. Look at that. That's so great. Yasuo said, he taught us about loyalty and devotion. He taught us about hope and faith. He taught us about patience and responsibility. But above all, Hachiko taught us the true meaning of friendship. It is for these reasons that we honor him today. Yasuo moved closer to the stat statue and asked Mr. Yoshikawa to join him. Together, they removed the cloth and stepped back. Everyone gasped. The Akitaken, made of bronze, raised high on a pedestal, was Hachiko, sitting up tall and straight, his right ear thrust forward, his left ear drooping down, his eyes staring ahead. Yasuo reached up to stroke the sculpture, half expecting to feel soft fur instead of the hard metal beneath his fingertips. What a good dog you are, Yasuo whispered to the statue. What a fine dog you are, Hachiko. You are the best dog in all of Japan. Whoa. So, how did Hachiko affect the people who met him? You might want to pause here and talk about it. Okay, so now we're going to read the epilogue. The epilogue is usually the part of the story that tells you something that happened after the end of the story. So this says New Year's Day, 
1939, which is four years later. To celebrate the new year, the entrance to Shibuya Station was decorated with pine tree branches to symbolize strength and bamboo to symbolize virtue. Yasuo, now a 20-year-old student at Tokyo Imperial University, climbed the stairs to the station carrying a gift of sweet mochi, cake, mochi cakes wrapped in a blue furashiki to give to Mr. Yoshikawa for the holiday. There was a long line of travelers waiting to see the station master. Yasuo stepped out onto the platform and sat down on the wooden bench across from Hachiko's statue to wait for his friend. Where Yasuo sat now was known as the Hachiko side of the train station. It was not uncommon to hear one person say to another, I'll meet you at Hachiko statue after work, or meet me at Hachiko at six o'clock. As Yasuo looked toward Hachiko statue, he noticed a girl about his own age. She was tall, slender, and very pretty, and her cheeks were bright with cold. Her hair was fastened with the ornament of white paper flowers, and she wore an elegant silk kimono embroidered with delicate plum blossoms. The girl stood with her back to Hachiko, glancing to her left and to her right. She looked up at the big clock hanging from the ceiling inside the train station and tapped her foot. Yasuo kept his eye on the girl as she waited. He knew it was rude to stare, but he could not turn away. The girl was scowling now, her forehead furrowed and her lips pointing down. Yasuo scowled as well. As Yasuo gazed at her, the girl looked at the clock one last time, thrust her hands on her hips, and walked away. Before he knew what he was doing, he jumped up to his feet. Wait! he cried. The girl turned around and smiled. Yasuo noticed she had a dimple on her left cheek. It disappeared quickly when the girl saw a stranger had called to her. She turned on her heels and started out the station. Wait! Yasuo called again. I know I'm not the one you're waiting for, he said as he caught up to her, but I would be honored if you would take a walk with me. He lowered his eyes and bowed. My name is Yasuo Takahashi. Come, ask the station master. He will tell you I'm respectable. And he led her inside the station over to Mr. Yoshikawa's office. Happy New Year, Yasuo said, bowing to his friend. He gave Mr. Yoshikawa the gift he had brought. I would like you to meet... My name is Miyuki, the girl said with a bow to the station master. I am pleased to meet you, Mr. Yoshikawa said, returning the bow. And I am pleased to see you have met my friend Yasuo. He is a fine young man. Patient and devoted, loyal and responsible, known far and wide for his kindness. Mr. Yoshikawa smiled broadly. And he's about to be rewarded for a very kind thing he did many years ago. The station master winked at Yasuo. Make sure you tell Miyaki about your friend, Hachiko. The faithful dog? Miyoka, Miyuki asked. Did you know him? Yes, I did, said Yasuo, leading Miyuki out of the station. As they walked, he told her all about Hachiko, and even though the day was windy and cold, they talked and talked all afternoon. Yasuo and Miyuki spent the next afternoon together and the afternoon after that as well. Soon they were spending all their time together, and soon they fell in love. Yasuo and Miyuki were together in the spring when the cherry blossoms bloomed and in the summer when the rains came. They were together in the fall when the leaves changed color and in the winter when the snow fell. Yasu Yasuo bought Miyuki, brought Miyuki home to meet his family. His mother and father thought she was a fine young woman. Miyuki brought Yasuo home to meet her family. Her mother and father thought he was a fine young man. A year passed and Yasuo asked Miyuki to meet him at Hachiko statue in Shibuya station on New Year's Day at three o'clock. He said he had something very important to ask her. Yasuo arrived at the statue at five minutes to three. He stood beside Hachiko, looking to his right, to his left, to his right again, searching the steady stream of travelers for that one face that would make his belly tremble with joy. At last he saw Miyuki coming toward him, and the sight of her made his own face light up like the sun. Hello, Miyuki, Yasuo said. He took her both her hands in his and stared into her lovely dark eyes. Hello, Yasuo. Miyuki said. What is it you have to ask me? <clears throat> Yasuo cleared his throat several times before he spoke. Miyuki, he said. Soon I will finish my studies and then... Yasuo squeezed her hands tightly. And then will you marry me? I promise that if you say yes, I will be as devoted to you as Hachiko was to Professor Ueno for all the days of my life. Yasuo and Miyuki both turned toward the statue of Hachiko, sitting up so tall and proud. And then they turned back toward each other. Miyuki looked into Yasuo's eyes. Her lips curved up into a smile, and the dimple he loved so well appeared on her left cheek. 
Yes, Yasuo, I will marry you, she said, her voice full of happiness. And I promise that for all the days of my life, I will be as devoted to you as you were to Chukin Huchiku, the faithful dog of Japan. <laughs> so, how did the story make you feel? Was it a sad story? A happy story? What makes you say that? You want to talk about it for a few minutes? And then come back and hear this author's note. It's interesting. <clears throat> author's note. Hachiko Waits is a work of fiction inspired by a true story. In January of 1924, Professor Isaburo Ueno adopted a three-month-old Akita puppy and named him Hachi. The professor traveled by, to work by train every day, and every day Hachi accompanied him to the train station. As the professor's train left, Hachi ran home, and every day he returned to Shibuya Station just before 3 o'clock to meet his master. One day in May of 1925, Professor Ueno died unexpectedly at work. Hachi waited at the train station for his master to come home that day and every day after that for approximately 10 years. Although Yasuo and his family are fictional characters, many people, including Mr. Oshikawa, cared for Hachiko, as he came to be called over the next decade. He died of natural causes while waiting for his master. The people of Japan were so impressed by Hachiko's loyalty that they decided to erect a statue in his honor and to place it at Shibuya Station. Money was raised and an artist named Teru Ando was hired. In 1934, just about a year before Hachiko died, a ceremony attended by many people was held to dedicate the statue. During World War II, Hachiko's statue was melted down so the metal could be used in the war effort. Soon after the war, Takishi Ando, the sculptor Teru Ando's son, created a new identical statue to replace the original one, and another dedication ceremony attended by an enormous crowd was held. This second statue is still at Shibuya Station, and it is a very popular meeting place. Over the years, it has become a tradition for young couples to pledge their loyalty to each other in front of Hachiko's statue. Though many years have passed since Hachiko waited for Professor Ueno at the train station, he has not been forgotten. To this day, this story is taught to school children all over Japan, and every year on April 8th, a memorial service is held at Shibuya Station to honor Chukin Hachiko, the faithful dog of Japan.